Hello everyone, you'll have seen the news by now, but Steven Gerrard has officially announced his retirement as a professional football and we thought we'd dedicate a, a small segment of our lives and your lives and Redmen TV to arguably the greatest player ever to put on a Liverpool shirt. Um, Chris, we were sat, uh, probably not in this room, I think we were sat in a, a few studios ago now when Jamie Carragher retired yeah. and, we, and we, at the time we said... We were upset at the notion of Jamie Carragher retiring, like really upset. I didn't know, we didn't know how we'd feel at the time of Gerard's retirement. Now, personally, this isn't having the impact I thought it might have, but I do think there's a certain degree that is just to do with how his career's gone. I think if he'd, if he'd walked away at Crystal Palace uh, a season and a half ago or whatever, I think I'd have been an absolute bit. How, yeah. how are you feeling? Uh, yeah, I, th I, I think I agree with you, to be honest, mate. I think, you know, the fact that Jamie Carragher retired as a Liverpool player, as a one-club man, it added something to it, you know. Because, but we've had to get used to the fact that Gerrard's not been here and he's been playing elsewhere, you know. Yeah. I've been watching the MLS this season, so I've seen Gerrard playing and I've got used to him in a white shirt. Yeah. Whereas I never thought that would happen. Yeah. And I've already seen him play and fit in. Yeah. There and you know, not look the first time I saw him in that LA Galaxy, I thought it doesn't suit him. Yeah. But now I'm like, yeah, it does, because I've seen him in it and I've watched him play football and I've understood how he's played. And you know, for me, I always prefer Jamie Carragher, I, I, you know, as a, as a footballer and all that type of stuff. He's not on Gerard, he's not in Gerard's league. Yeah, absolutely. But you can have a, you can have. <laughs> I always had something, I felt there was something there between me and Jamie, do you know what I mean? No, I'm, a kid, I'm, I'm a kidding around, a shared like, bond. No, you know what, he's not the best footballer, but he worked He worked damn hard, and I can relate to that more than, you know, Gerard, who just had all the skills in the world yeah. and all that type of stuff. So, it's a difficult one, but I think, I, I also feel like, I think we didn't give Gerard the best send-off, and I'm a little bit sad because of that. And How that, that, by that? Well, you know, that... The, 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 la the last game, the team didn't perform for yeah. him. I'm not talking about the fans, I'm talking about the, the team or that the he played they with. Or around, the things they did around and yeah, all, yeah. Everything about that, it felt like that wasn't how Gerard's story at Liverpool should have ended. It felt like the end of the story, that the, all the fans who'd been trolling him because of the, the, the slip they and all that. They had written the story. Ha exactly, and not exactly, yeah, completely. That. And, and I think it's, it's as though they thought, ha, ha, ha. Because I think that's that's the thing that's the worst thing for me. And I, and it, it's a shame that it would be his career's end it that way <laughs> because of what a magnificent football player what a magnificent servant he was to Liverpool um, just in terms of being a footballer on the world, on world stage as well up there with the best ever to play the game and it is a shame that it doesn't get to be a, a Hollywood story but I think Gerard's career's kind of not ever been that way but you know when you look at like Zidane so I mean I, I, to be fair actually kind of an ignominious end I guess to his playing career with the, the, the head button what have you but then he's gone in and he's, he's like broken all kinds of records as a manager and stuff There's, he's got that sitting aura about him whereas Gerard's always had those little moments in him of not superhuman which is kind of his appeal to some because it's fallen over when he was doing his post-match I think he was Luton and he was uh, he was being interviewed and he basically fell slipped and fell over it's a caring thing by the looks of it And it, 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 but it is a shame that I would have loved him to have this fairy tale story where he lifts a league title or he got one last piece of silverware or just freaking hell just go out on a win but it yeah. never it, you're right it never it never quite had that and that was that, that again you're right that's where Liverpool were as a club it just, which is a real I think real yeah I, f I feel the reason that I feel really sorry for Gerard is that I don't ever think he had the players around him to do himself justice and yeah. You know, he hindered himself his entire career for a love of Liverpool. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why I do love him. Because he could have gone and played football and won trophies <coughs> anywhere in the world. Yeah. You know, he could have gone to Chelsea in 2005. He could have gone to Real Madrid. He could have gone to any club in Europe would have had him if they thought they had a tiny little sniff yeah. of a chance. And, you know, Gerard being a Liverpool native and, you know, a Liverpool fan down to his core held him back. And I feel like the club and the players that he played with owed him more than the send off that he got. It's one of them, isn't it? You know, if he'd been born twenty years earlier, or maybe five years later, you know, that it's one of those things, isn't it? That he and it's interesting to know because we we he was so integral throughout to how he played, and we wouldn't have had the successes that we had. 
without him there, you know, we're going to come on in a minute to talk about some of your favourite goals and, and, and memories and stuff. But you know, so many of those like iconic Gerard performances yeah. were iconic because he did it on the biggest stage for Liverpool, and he was our best player. And you're right that it's a shame that you think of the best teams he was involved in. Probably a one hundred two when he was a kid coming through around that era. Uh, actually, oh four oh five wasn't was because that team was absolutely terrible. But like oh oh eight oh nine, then probably thirteen fourteen. But they were all they were they were peaks, and they, those teams fell off very shortly after the fact. And whereas you look at like a a, a gigs or a you know pick a pick a player skulls that's even you know skulls. the one that's always banded around with him. Yeah, Lampard. We're fortunate enough that when they came up, they came up at the right time at at the right at the right club, and were able to have a consistent consistent spell of winning things. So it's a testament to I think it's a testament to Gerard of how much he actually did win, because he, and people always say this with the Skulls comparison, the Lampard comparison, I, he always stands above them for me because Skulls and Lampard were never the best player in their teams. They were never, or they never the one go-to guy in that team. They were always surrounded by world-class talent. And I, I'll just look back to like 04, 05 in particular, and some of the players we had in that team. Garbage. Absolutely. Like, I can't imagine more than three were getting our team now, and they managed to win the European Cup. You yeah. know, and that's down to Gerrard uh, for a large part. You know, you think of the Olympiacos game more than anything. Is that that run would have been over right? Well, then who laid there. the ball onto him? <sighs> Neil Mellor. Yeah, Neil Mellor, and uh, from all the love in the world, and uh, Neil becoming a pundit, scored some, again some, some very important goals for us that season in particular. Um, Neil Mellor, we had Cinema Pongal came off the bench in that game. What have these guys got and done? I know Mellor hampered by injury, but he was never more than a championship centre forward, really. Cinema Pongal went and played around, I had a decent spell at Atletico, but, but more than that, not 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 much beyond that. Je Steven Gerrard was the guy who was the, who was dragging us. Out yeah, of the ship because he was our only FA World Cup finals. Player. He scored on every every big stage in the Champions League final, Europa, well, UEFA Cup final. Uh, he started it all against Birmingham, I think, in the League Cup. Robbie, Robbie, Robbie Fowler scored. Was it? Wasn't it two one? No, we drew. Did we? Yeah. We went to oh right. Did he score in a League Cup final? The, was it the Man, Man United. United Sorry, Man United one. So he's, he scored in that. He scored in the obviously the FA Cup. So he scored in every big game you can possibly have us in. And you know that's that's an incredible achievement for a centre midfielder. Right. You know, on the biggest stage of all, he always delivered for Liverpool, and made, it's a testament to him as a player. And you know, I have always thought growing up that. Kenny Dalglish was the greatest Liverpool player of all time, and I think over the last couple of years I've probably reevaluated that a little mm. bit, and maybe I'm edging it towards Gerrard now. And the one reason that I would say that it, it almost stops me handing it to him is I never saw Kenny's decline in quite the same <coughs> way. I don't remember Kenny's decline, whereas you, you tend to remember what's just happened, and you know the last couple of years of Gerrard, people were starting to murmur and all this type of stuff, but. You're talking 15 years at the top yeah. level, and Kenny didn't have that for us. Yeah, I think the thing about Kenny Dalglish, and again, why I, I, it's like, it's almost for me, it's almost cheating to say Dalglish when you're in our age bracket because I, I saw the very, very, very tail end of Kenny Dalglish's career. You know, I'd like 19, 1990, he was barely a player by, by that point. Um, so uh, for me, Stephen Gerrard, in terms of the, the players that I've seen, I think the most individually talented is Luis Suarez. But in terms of delivering it over a consistent period of time, com no one com comes completely close. Stephen Gerrard. And I think you're right. I think with Daglish, he was able to do what what you're meant to be able to do when you're at a good football club, consistently with consistently good players year in year out. You can go out, you can fade out gracefully. Now he took the manager's job in in, in eighty six, guided us to the double, scored the scored the, the vital goal as well. I think it was against Chelsea at the end of that that season. Um, when he was in his you know he was in his thirties by that by that point, and he was able to just because of the way it was, he, he pulled himself out. He used well. himself sparingly. Gerard went this Gerard where Gerard fell short for Liverpool, and again it's not his fault, and it goes back to everything we've said already was that he was a consistently top most important player for Liverpool, the captain. And he was not allowed to be faded out. Maybe that's part, part, partly his ego. 
maybe that was partly his desires and partly just the fact that Liverpool were. A but he always run reinvented club. himself for the team, yeah. didn't he? And but, you know, even in 13 14, he reinvented himself because, yes, he wasn't the best player, but he found a niche in that team where he could be yeah. part of it again. He was what he should have. He was what, again, I keep coming back to it, but it looked like gigs. Giggs was a flying left winger and he reinvented himself as a centre midfielder and got more got more life out of his legs. Gerard did it similarly, but what would have been we and it's it's Liverpool Football Club's fault is that he should have been allowed and it should have been managed in such a way that he went from forty games a season to thirty to fifteen to ju- you know what I mean? And, it, it, and he's at his best every time he was on the field. <laughs> exactly, and that is the biggest disappointment to me for Steven Gerrard. And I don't think I think ultimately he'll look back. It, it, you know, very, very positively about how his career has gone. How could you not look at what he's done? Look at what he's won. For me, again, it's not. It's nothing on him. I think it's on. It's. A, it's just a shame that he was at a Liverpool football club that's never. That's constantly been in flux throughout throughout his career. And it's. And again, it's a testament to him as a man that he stuck with Liverpool throughout yeah, that. Because as you said, could have gone to Chelsea and won title after title. Could have gone to. I mean, he never would have gone to United. But you know. It's a, it, Alex Ferguson would have had him in a heartbeat. Could have done all kinds. Could have gone abroad. Could have done this and that. And I, 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 I love the faith that he he showed in his football club. It didn't quite work out how we all would have had it, but no, phenomenal. Um, right, should we move on to some some tweets then? I'll, I'll get your thoughts on these in a second, Chris. Um, so, ask you for your favourite goal and or performance. Uh, let's go all the way back then. <coughs> Great one here, Joe Maudsley Jr. Mella. Lovely cushion header for Janet! Oh, you beauty. What, what a hit. Um, yeah, Olympiacos. Uh, there's a few people who've mentioned these ones, but yeah, I, I that that game, that goal, that was really the first. We'd seen a lot of iconic Gerard goals prior to that point, but that was the first one that was like of him Absolutely saving us. Pulling out, pulling out the fact. He said the, the commentary was he didn't want to wake up tomorrow morning in the in the UEFA Cup or the, whatever it was called at the time, um, and he single handedly right. stopped that happening. Uh, yeah, he did, and it it's it's mad because it's hard enough to hit them. I'm sure. Anyway, I'm never hit one like that. <laughs> yeah. But under the pressure that he was under, and and he did it time and time again, and it's unbelievable to think that yeah. he, he could just do it like him. What were, the, what were some others? So, performance, uh, says Martin, uh, Turner underscore LFC was Everton. Uh, Everton hat-trick. hat-trick. Yeah, goal West Ham in the FA Cup final. That Everton one, because that, that'll get forgotten about, because again, come toward the, the tail end, that was that season we were just we were magnificent anyway, and he showed his class. He, he shouldn't have been able to put that kind of performance in, particularly against Everton. He loved the goal. Loved the goal in the derby. You get nine or something in derbies in total. Just, like just absolutely they, they hated playing against him, didn't he? But you know, and he was brilliant against them, and and he loved it. He, he relished those games, and you could see that. And he, you know, I think sometimes he was accused of being a little bit hot-headed in the northwest derbies or the or the proper Merseyside derby and stuff. You know, he picked up a few red cards and stuff, but that's because it meant so much. Particularly and you could the one never where he had... hold that against him. Yeah. The one where he came on and went off. No, no, no. The one where he had the 08 shirt on to celebrate the capital of culture and got sent off. But this um, is it. Yeah. I can't stay mad. And I, I no. used to get angry at the moment, but you can't stay mad at someone who just gives a shit that this is, much. This is the thing, isn't it? Is that he's, that I, I said this earlier, like the Roy the Rovers style moments. Yeah. Gerard wasn't Roy the Rovers, he was a real person. And that again added to the appeal that you know, if you were, if you were scripting it, he wouldn't have had so many red cards. He wouldn't have got sent off against Man United in his last in his last season. He wouldn't have done X, Y, and Z. He'd have done these things. But that, that, again, that was it. He was a real human being that gets lost a lot of times with modern footballers who are thought of being superheroes. Ian Roger says goal, own goal versus Chelsea League Cup final performance. Definitely the Denver Bar game. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, uh, LFC Red Zone says his nonchalant curler against Marseille away is highly underrated. Is that the one where it comes in and he bends it around that <laughs> bends way? Bends it round and over, yeah. just the ph- phenomenal. You know technique. why that's not his best goal? Why? Because that gave him ideas for the rest of his career. Yeah, he thought he could score that every time. Yeah, and yeah. that annoyed me because he tried that <laughs> far too often. Like, <laughs> yeah. If that a... hadn't have gone in, we'd never have seen that technique again. No, what a magnificent goal it was that was. It was an incredible goal. Absolutely like. incredible. It was, it was. Um, hello, Bello. Oh. 10. Hey, hello, Bella. Uh, it says his header in the Champions League final. Yep. Uh, Simon Wyatt said, hello, hello, here we go. Of course, the iconic T-shirts flag. available at redmentvshop.bigcartel.com. Uh, that's right. Um, the redmentvshop.bigcartel.com, I apologise. Link? 
Okay. Make a note, Tom. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, Christmas the, sweaters there too. The iconic, the iconic com uh, Clad Tilsley commentary. Uh, not iconic if you watch the Sky coverage, which they didn't, they didn't have it. Um, Matios won UK. FA Cup final versus West Ham 3 3 equalise. I mean, that, that strike. <laughs> I don't think that I think that was voted the greatest FA Cup final goal of all time, and if it wasn't, it should have been because there's never been. I don't think it's what minute think, was it in like ninety three or something. It was the last. Yeah, it's. In, I think. I think. I actually think the you hear it. The the announce the minutes. Oh, so it's like, you, you hear them announced at a time, and then in the back, yeah, and then and then, yeah, he, and then right. he hits it. But that goal, you could take it. You could get a, a team of the best footballers in the world of all time. You could put them on a, with a pitch with as many footballs as you want and a camera, and you could say recreate that goal, and you could give them basically the rest of their lives. And there's a reasonable chance you could not recreate that strike. It's that, it's that good. It's like half volley, forty yards out from goal, straight as an arrow in the in the bottom corner. And it's I think it's one of those that if that goes in the top bin, like they get, they cancel football. You know what I mean? Nobody. Let, let's not play football again. Let's no one score any more goals. We're well, I'm retiring goals. Glad it never went in the top. Well, eight. yeah, but I mean, as far as I mean, but I actually think it's a Who better strike for football? it. Well, exactly. The world because there's no you're never scoring a better goal than that if that goes because everyone loves the top end, don't they? But uh, in fair, the, the way it's the, the goal itself, yeah, that that might be the best. It's one of the best goals ever scored in ever scored in football. And when you consider that we were two or three minutes away from losing an FA Cup final. Absolutely amazing. Um, Haf Hafiz Hamir HFZ um, says, is volley against Middlesbrough top bin? Yes, you know like in like 2004, 2005 season or something. Incredible. Takes it down, two bounces, outside of the boot, 40 yards, top bin. Me. Yeah. Uh, Matty P90, Fulham away, 13, 14, top off, spoke it fucking on. He knew it and we knew it, it was brilliant. And uh, yeah, it, was that? the the penalty yeah, against, against penalty. Fulham and he, he took the shirt off and he was like so, and it you know, we, we all know how that season ended up, but it was moments like that when, you know, just we stepped up in that game. That was a one that we'd have lost in the past and Steven Gerrard cool us under pressure being able to do it. There's millions we could literally the, Bar uh, the, the goal past Bartes, Man United, about two thousand and one. The one where again similarly forty yards out, two touches, top bin. The one where He's got again. He's got. We, I remember we, me, you, and a mate of us used to go to the park and try and recreate that goal, and it's basically impossible because he doesn't get the ball out from his feet. Yeah. It's it's like two inches in front of him. The the technique is probably why his groins went so badly in, in later life. But the, the the to be able to generate that much power from that close to the football, you know, when you look at his later ones, he does a full. Swing. Swing where he he, he, he he really digs that one out in the air. No, I, I was actually there th for that There was one. another an, another massively underrated one. Is do you remember the one where he skinned about four people in the penalty box for England, just jinking and in and out, in and out, and then I think it was a little outside the right. Boot <laughs> that wasn't. That was only a few years post. ago, I think, wasn't it? Is that incredible right? goal? Yeah. Incredible, and, and that's the thing with Gerard. When you when you've you've just ran, read through a few now, we've got headers. We've got half volleys, we've got strikes, we've got insteps outside of the boot. We're jinking past five players. This is why he's one of the greatest players to ever play for Liverpool. Yep. He can literally do it all, as proved by the goals that he scored on the biggest stages of all. Yeah, and the one that's worth mentioning is the one that started it all. Um, I remember Steven Gerrard hearing about this this kid coming through the ranks and was he going to get a go? And it was he had a couple of little you know, we, the, the, Willy Wony kind of moments. I remember he played against I think he came in the team against Celta Vigo, but it basically Sheffield Wednesday and he comes in gets comes off the bench comes into the team, runs towards the penalty area, drops the shoulder, goes past, smacks the ball in the opposite top corner, and you're like, I mean, how you, you think about since then, and you think about young the scouts lads who've been in and around Liverpool, been in the 21s and the the 18s and what have you, and how we some of they've just flattered to deceive. You know, Jordan Rossiter, we all wanted so much room. He got he got his goal against Middlesbrough. Just not in that class. Stephen Gerrard to come in, and you, you know, when you see someone, you're like, that's a player that. That's a player, and we just—it's sad, but you know, there's a local lads to, to announcing yourself on the street. But, he, but he, like that. He, even you know, he's got that. I've said it myself on this show that he had the skills that maybe a, a Jamie Carragher or something never had. But Gerard worked incredibly hard for that as well because 
you know, going through the youth teams and stuff, I know that he's come out and said Jason Kumas was the most skillful midfielder of that generation, wasn't he? And, you know, Kumas never did it because of the stuff off the pitch and maybe he never had the mental attitude that Gerard had. But Gerard kept himself in peak physical condition as far as he could. You know, he had some terrible injuries and stuff. He worked incredibly hard off the, off the pitch. And I think that's an underrated quality of his as well. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone who knows him speaks to his prof his professionalism and you consider yeah he had a couple of he's had a couple of incidents away from football which I think a lot of it boils down to the fact again it speaks to the fact that he is still a nor he's managed to be a normal person to the best that you can living in this city when you are the most iconic footballer the most like probably the most iconic person within the within Mer in Merseyside yeah. as well you know so yeah it's um yeah uh, it's absolutely phenomenal um if you had to pick your favorite goal and performance uh, I think performance would be the West Ham Cup final. I think he scored two that day, didn't he? Um, and goal, maybe the Middlesbrough one. To yeah. be honest with you, I, I do like that goal. Like, yeah, I am. Um, I think again, performance. The fact to, to have a cup final named after you, essentially, you know, the, the Gerard final. I know it's not it's not an official title, but you know, uh, there's a DVD <laughs> and it, it is referred to that. But I think that's absolutely magnificent, and you know, again. But time and time, the man dragged us out. And I think goal, if it, it's got to be Olympiacos, because th that was the one where he announced himself. And, you know, again, that team had no right yeah. to get through that group. We were poor at times in that group and no, and no right to get where they did. And you think about the platform that laid down, you know, the, we got better and better as that, 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 that game, that campaign. Uh, kind of unfurled, you know, uh, beating Leverkusen 3 1 over, over, in both legs. Beating Juventus, beating Chelsea, just about getting to the final, scoring in the final and stuff. Mate, so the Olympiacos one, just in terms of that and the, and the commentary that goes goes with it, and also again maybe just um, an outside shout for the header in Istanbul because that, like, <laughs> yeah, you don't score headers like that. From edge that of the distance. box to the far corner, just him floating in mid air doing that, and you consider what what came after that, spark the fight back him. Doing all this kind of stuff, like yeah, absolutely incredible. Uh, so just briefly uh, on the the future, then Chris, where where would you like to see Steven Gerrard? Um, back at Liverpool in some capacity, I think you know uh, he'd be. Uh, in, uh, he he wants to be at Liverpool. I think that's you know that's pretty evident now. Uh, you know turning down MK Dons and stuff like that. He wants to work with Jurgen Klopp. I feel because of, you know going back there only a couple of months ago in the MLS mid-season break and whatever, doing a little bit of training. I think he just needs to act a bit like a sponge now and just soak up as much good information as possible. And I'm not saying that it's a full-time role with Liverpool, to be honest. I think he should go out and expand his horizons. If he's got an opportunity to work with a decent manager at, uh, at the FA, then do that. If it's Southgate, don't bother. Um, go, and, go, and go over to Madrid. If Zidane will have you for a little bit and yeah. see what they're doing over there, and just go over to Bayern Munich, go go over to as many big clubs as possible, steal all their fucking ideas and bring them back for us. Because yeah. when you're ready, we're ready to take you back. Yeah, absolutely. I um, I can say I don't know whether he'll ever have the ability to be a top a top level manager. I, I, I hope so. <clears throat> it kind of doesn't matter because if he is, he is, and that's amazing for Liverpool. And if he isn't, then whatever. You know, I think there's a role for Gerard one way or the other, and I, I and I. <laughs> I've heard talk at the under at the under eighteens, maybe the under eighteens manager. I think that would be. I think that would be the amazing. Thing is, the thing that I think with Gerard is, I don't think he's going to be like a Jurgen Klopp or a Pep Guardiola type of a manager, but he can be a Zidane type of a manager. And you know, I'm maybe doing him a little bit of a disservice here right now, but you know, this is a, just an honest thought. I don't know if Ferguson was the best coach ever, but I certainly believe that he was one of the best managers ever. Yeah. And I think that you can, there is, in this day and age more than ever, there is space for that because the egos that you have to manage now yeah. will look up to a Steven Gerrard. Yeah. If you can, if he can surround himself <coughs> by the best coaching team ever, he could lead that coaching team places that they couldn't get to on their own. I think he's, he's more like a Kenny Daglish. Yeah. Than anything. I don't think he would be, an, I don't think he'd suit an assistant manager job. No. I don't think where he has, you have to be the disciplinarian because I don't think and that's, his, that's that. his thing. But I think he's the kind of guy, who, he has the ideas, he's an intelligent fella, he understands footy inside and out, that he could be a very good, he could be a good coach, could be a very, very good coach. But I think, yeah, I think he would suit that. I don't see him, he's never, no, because no one's a Jürgen Klopp really. He's not like a Klopp Conte type 
run, scream, roar at people because he's never he's never seen enough of that. But I think he's got enough. I think he can balance the egos of a squad really, really well. And if he had good coaches around him and he, he provides the leadership for that team of coaches and that team of players, he could have a very, very good managerial career. Yeah, sure to. No, I think absolutely. I think the retirement, I think it takes the pressure off a return to Liverpool because he's just clearly saying, I don't want to be involved in the fir- in, in, in the first team stuff. And I think that just makes it, that untangles it a lot. Because if I look, I, I genuinely was of the opinion that if he was going to, if he wanted it, I'd have taken his registration. Yes, he mm-hmm. doesn't I, need to be on the bench a, a, at all, really. You know, just have him there in case you need him. <laughs> exactly, That's all I've in said. case of you know break glass, in case of emergency, if you're having a mad injury crisis. But um, that 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 option's gone now. So so fair enough. But yeah, I I, I say I get him get him back in and have him have him work. Whether he ultimately ends up as manager is completely irrelevant. I think the the benefits that someone of his quality and experience and passion. Um, particularly for this football club, I, I, think, I think it would be think stupid not to There are even more. things that he can do right now. You know, For example, you've got him as an under-18s coach, but you've got a problem with a player. Let's say he will know what that player is going through better than a Jurgen Klopp or a Buvac or anything like that or a Linders or anything like that because he's been through it. He's that link to the players yeah. without being that link to the players. No, I said almost. I did a video on this through the week and I said um, he, the problem is, is that You've got these players and that have succeeded come through the academy, but in a minute they're just photos on walls, they're just signed shirts in you know in, in, in frames. Having someone there that you're a living, breathing person who's got fresh experience that you can call upon, you know, you know, I think that's magnificent. But let us know your thoughts then. What you know, what where do you see the future for Steven Gerrard? Let me know in the comments below. And hey, hey, what was your favourite goal? There's a space on this couch for him if he ever decides. As Stevie, well. you're always welcome, mate. You know this. Um, I think you know it. I think you know as well. You, you definitely do. Went all the way to LA and I didn't even get to see you. Yeah. I, well, I, I did get to see you. I didn't get to meet you. You owe me because I had to do the Sky Fan Zone commentary when you got sent off against Man United and I lost the prick. Uh, but no. Uh, yeah, let us know anyway. Any of your thoughts? Favourite goal? Favourite Stephen Gerrard performance in the comments below? Like, share, well, that, Paulie, and give us a subscribe. Stamp, I, think, I think we are in. Yeah, fair enough. Stevie, you don't need to come in, but come in anyway. Come in because you want to. Cheers.